Welcome to this lesson in which we will explore the input box function. After reviewing this lesson, you should be able to display a dialog box using the input box function, set the caption for an input box, use constants or variables as input box parameters, and finally, combine the input box function with the triparse function in order to protect against invalid data entry. Let's explore the input box. The input box control is a little bit different than some of the controls we've worked with so far because the input box doesn't have a visual control that you can drag onto the form at design time. In fact, the input box really is a way of getting around having to create uh, additional forms for an application uh, because if you have a very um, busy screen, uh, very rich interface, um, and you need to solicit specific or context appropriate inputs, um, you would uh, ordinarily, if you didn't have the input box, you would create another form. And then when you need that form, you would, uh, uh, in response to user action, bring that form forward and have the user fill out the additional form control and then close that and go back to the, the first form. And so, you know, that's a lot of complexity having to build multiple forms when really all you need to do is gather some, some input specifically. So if you need just to gather input and you're not doing a lot of, of rich, complex form input output, uh, the input box is a wonderful way to do this. So let's start with a very simple example of just a real basic input box. So here I've created a Visual Studio form called the input box demo. And uh, these are just buttons. So I have four button controls on there. And um, since there's no uh, toolbox element, no visual element for the input box, Let's go ahead and see what this looks like in code. So I'll double click on the uh, uh, first button, button one, and uh, see what we're doing here. So uh, here for the click event of button one, I'm declaring a local variable called age as integer, and I'm setting age equal to, and then I call input box as a function. So you see the input box function in the parentheses, and here I've provided provided only one argument, only one parameter, which is the string, how old are you? And so that is going to create a input box, which by default is going to be named the same as the form that calls it, or it's going to be titled or captioned the same as the form that, that calls it. And it's going to ask the question, how old are you? Uh, it's going to accept an input and it's going to store the result in age. Let's go ahead and see how that works. So now my program is running and I'll click on this button one and it pops up uh, the input box and notice that the caption is input box demo, which is the same as the caption for the form which called it. And our prompt is, or the message is, how old are you? It has an okay and a cancel button. And here we can put in uh, a number, let's say 99 and say, Okay, and the program reverts back to the form that called the input box, and uh, that variable within that uh, uh, scope is now assigned. Okay, so obviously if we wanted this to survive, the variable needs to, to survive just the input box um, or the, the click event for the button, we'd need to make that a module level variable or do something else with it to, uh, uh, to persist it, make it static or something like that. Okay, so, so far so good. Um, there are some additional features here and there's also some weaknesses with uh, what I've done so far in our code and we'll um, improve upon that in the next demo. But let's see what the problem is. Let's call that again. And it says, how old are you? And let's say I said I was 99. Now what's the, the data type we've assigned that to is an integer. And so this is a string. What's going to happen when I attempt to assign and store a string to an integer data type? Uh, so it's a, an unhandled exception and the program crashes. So we need to do a little to improve on that. We'll see that in the next video. 
Okay, so in our second example, we're going to continue our input box demos, and uh, incrementally we're going to make improvements. So um, one of the things we still need to address is uh, what happens if we get an invalid entry. Uh, I'm not going to fix that just yet, but let's take a look at what we are doing in example two, and that is we're um, overriding the default title bar. So let's double click that and notice that what really has changed here, our original program had one parameter here, which was the message parameter. The second parameter here is the caption for the uh, input box. And so we don't have to be satisfied with just having the default uh, from the form or project that called input box demo. We can override that so it will give us uh, something that is a little bit uh, more of a tip to the user, provide better contextual guidance about what are we looking for. And so now the the uh, uh, input box, when it pops up, the title of that input box is going to be age, and it will still prompt how are you, and it will assign that to the age variable. Let's see that in operation. Okay, so notice our caption is now age. And it says, how all are you? And if we put in 99, all is happy because that's an integer. However, we still have this bug that we need to address. And that is if some invalid entry is made, can't store a string as an integer and crash, and we need to make some improvement. So we'll see that in the next video. In example three, we'll continue to incrementally improve on our uh, input box uh, example. And so um, uh, what we're going to do in uh, example three is uh, instead of using string literals, so instead of the quotation marks for the uh, message and the uh, title of the input box, uh, we'll use constants. And uh, we could easily use variables if it's uh, important for those to uh, change variably. Generally speaking, we're going to um, uh, not change the um, title or the prompts uh, for the uh, input boxes during the run of the program, so we'll use the, the constants. Um, we could easily replace constants with variables and vice versa. So let's take a look at what we've done here. Okay, so uh, notice that we still have two parameters and we're assigning to age input box prompt title. And you kind of notice by the convention of my having used all caps for those that I likely have declared them as um, constants. So it is a, a, a typical convention. It's not required, but a typical naming convention is to make constants uh, names all capped. Uh, really makes them stand out so you know they're constants and not variables. So here's our constant prompt as string, how old are you, and constant title as string age. And uh, so this could be quite long, and we often will take and declare all of our constants at the beginning of a long program. And uh, so we'll have a whole list of constants, and then all we have to do is reference them. Um, and uh, so you don't have to type all this again. Um, and let's see how that works. Okay, so clicking on number three looks exactly like we saw in the example of number two and we put in 99 and all is well and again i'm deferring one more video we haven't really solved the other problem which is what if it's not a string entry and uh hint 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 um, you, you should be itching because you already know uh, what you can do to get rid of the problem of converting or or making sure that a string will convert properly to an integer um, so that the entry that's made is interpreted as an integer if you think about it. So we'll leave that as a little self-test, but let's play around a little bit more. First, let's show that the problem is still here. 99 and crash. Okay, so let's end that run. And just to prove, we could very easily have uh, used a variable instead of uh, a constant. Um, if we had, instead of const, if we had made that dim, in which case what I probably should do is change the naming convention here back to camel casing, 
And since it's one word, that's all lowercase. And again, that's a nicety. The, the computer doesn't care. It's simply a matter for of, of using it in your code and, and adhering to naming conventions. And those will vary probably with your employer uh, for the IT department or company you're working for. We refer to those as a shop standard. So you're going to use the naming conventions and, and typographical conventions and commenting conventions uh, as a programmer that are the shop standard. So all of your uh, code that you produce is consistent uh, with the practices of your organization. And that's very useful because you're going to probably create and maintain a lot of code as a programmer and having some consistency uh, is very, very helpful in, in eliminating problems and bugs and also finding problems and bugs. So it makes it easier to read the code and navigate the code. Let's see this. And three. And yeah, so it's, it's just as happy to use it as a variable. Um, again, kind of a waste here because we won't be changing that for this particular program and since we're not going to change it it would be a better practice to go ahead and make that a constant and declare it that way so i'll put it back that way and we'll save that back out okay next video we're finally going to solve the problem of our data entry error and data validation i promise all right, and we'll continue in our fourth and final installment on the input box demo uh, by at long last uh, solving the problem with uh, invalid data being entered. And did you solve the, the uh, sort of little self-test checkpoint question there? Uh, you already know how to do this. We're going to use our old friend triparse. Okay, and since the input box function uh, is just that, it's a function, it returns a value, the value has a type, we can um, drop that right into the triparse function itself. In this case, we're looking for an integer, so we're looking for integer.triparse. And uh, um, that way, if the uh, value that's entered by the user is convertible to an integer, it will just convert it. And if it's not, right now, the default is we're, we're not doing anything with it. So it's as if the user didn't enter anything at all. So let's uh, take a look at the code here. So um, again, nothing's changed uh, here from example three. We have uh, left our parameterized prompt and title or caption for the, uh, 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 the in input box. We're still declaring age as integer, but here's the difference. Okay, so we've simply wrapped the whole input box prompt title thing in triparse and now instead of having to say age equals remember that triparse takes the variable that we want to try and store the result in as the second argument and so when triparse fires off if it's successful it'll convert it and store it in age if it's not successful the program just ignores the entry and it's as if the user didn't enter anything okay so let's give that a try see how it looks and fire off number four and it looks identical to what number three looked. Uh, and you know, if we enter a valid input, you don't see that anything different has changed. But let's try it if we enter an invalid input. And now instead of crashing, it just goes on. Now, again, it hasn't really received a, a valid input for age. The age variable hasn't been initialized to 99 because you couldn't, you know, the computer doesn't convert the word 99 or any other garbage you enter um, into a valid um, uh, integer. Uh, magic doesn't happen, but the program at least does not crash. And so that's what we're looking for. And uh, you could add some additional code that would detect that and say, hey, you know, Mr. User, Ms. User, you haven't uh, in, made a valid input. Please try again. We could call that input box function once again. Uh, we're going to leave that for uh, either an exercise for the student. We will be revisiting that in uh, later lessons to see how we can elaborate on some of the data validation and error handling um, in that sort of routine when the time comes. This concludes the lesson.